Hello, welcome to Seniority. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. Thank you for being here once again. Today I am talking with uh, Michael Bell, who is president, and Bruce Greenalch, who is vice president of sales for ETG. And we will let them talk to you about what that is. I want to welcome you both to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for Happy being to be here. here. Okay. And Michael. Uh, as president, we're going to let you speak first. How's that? So, yeah, uh, my name is Michael Bell. I'm president of Emerging Technology Group. Um, we launched in February of 2012, um, providing technology services uh, that encapsulate uh, our core our service, which is local long distance internet. But uh, we don't want to focus on local long distance internet. We want to be a, a solution provider. Um, prior to uh, launching Emerging Technology Group, I worked with AT&T uh, in the enterprise sector, uh, servicing clients um, um, with uh, a, a larger portfolio. Um, I don't want to mention names, but right. in excess of $30,000 a month in billing. Mm -hmm. oh, and, wow. and, uh, That's a little more than mine is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more than most companies uh, on Cape. So I'll let Bruce introduce himself, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, my name is Bruce Greenhouse. Very pleased to be here today. Um, I am the VP of Sales at Emerging Technology Group, otherwise we also call uh, ETG. And um, previously to um, working with Michael at ETG, um, I was employed um, um, also in the telecommunications uh, industry. And um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's been a very uh, great pleasure to be able to to actually work now in the area that I live in. I always have lived on the Cape and worked in Boston, so it's oh, nice to be situated here, although ETG yeah. is not just, um, you know, resigned to working here on the Cape. We work off Cape as well, sure. but it's nice to have a, an easy commute. Uh, so you so. both live in Sandwich, which is, is good. It's, yes. It's yeah. a great community. Good for us. Very You'll great be able community. To watch us locally. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, so. so, this is a, a new company that you've started. Is that what I'm understanding? I uh, started the discussion in uh, around August of 2011, uh, getting the principals involved, and then we officially launched uh, as a corporation in February of 2012. Mm -hmm. so, so were you both working together prior to August of 2011? No, we were not. Um, both of us, again, in the industry, but um, we, I um, met Michael through an acquaintance of, of both of ours okay. and, um, and um, just, again, very enthusiastic about the idea. I've never worked for a startup before sure. and um, it's been an, an, you know, just a fantastic experience and um, you know, we yeah. have a lot of uh, um, you know, good faith that um, we've got um, a, you know, good programs in place, good people in place, and sure. um, we're really It's always interesting to me where the idea came from and how you get started, you know, even to find somebody who believes in what it is you're doing and, and you may be believing in it yourself. Um, with the conception from my uh, working with uh, AT&T mm -hmm. uh, and having uh, 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 a lack of service. So one of the things that I found working within this industry that uh, you call uh, a typical communication provider, may it be you know ABC company or AT&T or Verizon or Comcast, mm -hmm. and you just have to press one, press two, press three, press four, and you really never got your issue resolved. So I wanted to uh, sort of like suppress that pressing one, pressing two uh, idea of customer service, and that's what ETG is all about. So I went out and I spoke with you know a couple of other colleagues, including Bruce and a few of our, our principals, and we all came together and said, you know what, Michael, that's a great idea. Let's go forward in providing exceptional customer service uh, okay. uh, that the other companies doesn't provide. Very good. So we are a facilitator, in the lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so if you're a client and you're looking for internet services or web hosting or whatever managed service you may need, mm -hmm. you'll come to us, we'll facilitate that product and services and pricing and, and source it through various carriers. So we could do you know, five carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, uh, 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 One Communication or Nextel. 
and we will come to you and say, Rebecca, here is the price and what company do you want to go with? And then once you choose the company, then you work through us to provide oh. those services for oh, you. Oh, that's very interesting. So you deal with all of these companies? Yes, we do. Ah, okay. Very good. So do you deal with homeowners only? Uh, we deal with uh, small to medium-sized business for right now, and eventually we're looking to go into the enterprise space, which is the higher level of services, you know, maybe the uh, 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 fidelities and oh, type wow. of that clientele. Wow. <coughs> that sounds wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So, and uh, uh, your uh, part in this? My part, yep. Uh, my part is uh, directing the sales department. So okay. um, we've just recently taken on a few more people. So again, you know, coming from the startup, um, you know, we're <coughs> slowly starting to grow, um, bringing people on, and um, you know, it's it's a good message that we we have. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it out there. Sure. And uh, again, we appreciate you know the opportunity to be sitting here. Um, you know, today in front of you and, and discussing what we're doing. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, we've had some people, you know, ask us why would you want to start a business in this, you know, economic environment. But mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's uh, that's a good story to tell as well. Um, you know, it, it's it's right. an opportunity we think is out there, as Michael said, with the customer service lacking um, and um, accountability. Really, as as the larger carriers get larger, um, you know, the, the smaller businesses are kind of left behind, mm -hmm. and you see a lot of that on the Cape. Um, there are not account teams um, dedicated from other carriers to this area, mm -hmm. and so that's where we really feel like we could fit uh, <coughs> fit in there. Wonderful. So, yeah. so you're are you anticipating having a, a one day a large company? You, you know, we, we've we've when we were forming uh, ETG, we 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 looked at you know all the various scenarios where we would like to be and um, I think you'd be short-sighted to say oh we just want to start as a small company and yeah, stay small right. I mean we would love to be a large company sure. uh, we would love to be a, a, a large employer here on the Cape and again we're not just um, you know resign ourselves to working here you know we work off Cape as well and we have employees right now off Cape so mm -hmm. um, sure looking at the larger picture we just want to continue to be able to grow and um, sure. you know hope for good so things are you based here in Sandwich um, right now, we're actually, um, our, we're headquartered, our corporate office is over in Osterville. Okay. And um, it's, 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 it's working very well right now. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I, I keep going back to we're just not a Cape company. Um, right. Certainly, we want to provide exceptional service and everything we can here. Um, but, you know, one day, perhaps, you know, we go over the bridge. Maybe we do. But sure. um, for right now, it's a, it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I think I'm trying to get my mind around, um, you, you're dealing with all of these companies that you want to be better than. Correct, so good question. So in dealing with these companies, how do you become better than? How can you be assured that you're going to be able to answer those questions instead of going to the one, two, three, four, five on the dial? It's a great question, and we've, we've, we hear that before. So, um, you know, we want to be able to consult with a, a client, um, go in, see what their needs are today, where they need to be tomorrow, and come up with, a, you know, what we like to say, a, you know, technology-driven, scalable, cost-effective solution for them. And how we're able to do that is we've established partnerships with various companies. Um, some of the companies that we work with, in turn, um, partnered with the larger carriers. So if you wanted to go directly to that carrier, you could do that. And then again, as Michael said, you're just going to get an 800 number and you're going to be stuck in a queue. Right. Um, if, if you come with us, who then we in turn work with our partners, um, as Michael said, when you need an issue, you're calling us and then we in turn run with it. So that's sort of, we've become, we don't have to say the middleman, because um, that's a term that some people don't really you know like to associate with but really that's what we've become we become your advocate the okay. clients advocate um, between you know ETG and the client and then ETG and whatever carrier or partner that we bring in to provide the solution sure so how do people <coughs> get to know that ETG is out there and looking for clients I know you're on the show for that reason but before um, you came here well, how did you get people to know who you were um, we, you know, obviously the web and the electronic Business age, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we do a lot of networking um, events, uh, various chambers, 
um, um, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, an industry or a segment that's so like uh, ignored is the nonprofit organization. So we have a program called the Affinity Program, which targets the nonprofits. So one of the things that we're doing is going after the nonprofits uh, with the Affinity Program, which compensate the nonprofits uh, uh, in terms of a residual basis, in terms of what they're spending with their current carrier. So if you're a nonprofit, for example, and you're using AT&T, as it is right now, you pay AT&T and you get nothing back. So with our affinity program, you go through us, we sign you up with AT&T, ETG will uh, 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 compensate you on a residual basis. So it's like Bank of America, uh, keep the change, or okay. if it's like Stop and Shop, which is uh, the bonus program. So it's a similar program that's targeted to nonprofits. So in terms of good in customers, that's one of the things that we've done. And then just through uh, our relationship with various partners and vendors, uh, we're trying to expose ourselves. And then, like I said, through the web. Okay. And uh, it's, uh, the, the web address is uh, smartetg.com. Very good, thank you. And we're on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, of course. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. So you're doing all of the stuff that uh, networking Correct. Is, exactly. Correct. Exactly. <coughs> yep. Yep. So. So is your, uh, is what you're trying to do get most of the nonprofits into your base? It's um, it, it's a good question. Um, you know, it's a program. This affinity program Michael spoke about. Um, it, it's a. It, Sometimes you need to be careful with the nonprofits. Okay. Um, there's so many rules that they need to play by, right. um, and so and, I'm, and I know they've also been approached through other you know various programs that are out there. So um, it's a matter of once we can get to the nonprofit and speak to them and explain the program how it works. Mm -hmm. um, you know they're they're very much interested, and um, again depending on their. Um, what their cycle is, their billing cycle with their existing carrier. It might take some time to to to, to kind of um, you know work with them, but um, once they hear about the program, it's in, it's very intriguing to them. So, on a typical situation, you will have a nonprofit, and it varies, you know, from nonprofit to nonprofit. But some of them, they're just caught up with the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, business uh, uh, routine that nonprofits are not supposed to be charged federal taxes or state taxes. And in some cases, through a billing uh, issue, like Bruce said, they're paying these taxes and they don't realize it. So what we could do is come in, evaluate the, situ the situation with the carrier, get the t uh, appropriate taxes removed, and in some cases, get a reimbursement for the taxes that they've paid. That they've paid. Oh, wow, that right. sounds fantastic. Yeah. So the core, though, is that we are able to, uh, uh, you know, again, uh, take a nonprofit and bring them onto a particular carrier, and again, uh, so like compensate them for doing business with ETG, which is unheard of. So it's not, we have not launched this affinity program. There's other affinity programs throughout the industry, but it's just something that we want to take a, 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 a next step, uh, the next step to, uh, to, to help the nonprofit and help the community. Oh, excellent. Uh, I, from what I understand from nonprofits, you know, we're talking now startup. They have a tough enough time getting themselves started up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of them, you know, are not even thinking about uh, a, a communication system. You know, they're they're busy dealing with themselves. It, it, absolutely, and um, as Michael said about the taxes, sometimes those things just fall to the wayside. Um, right. One of the things that some of the other clients that we've had. Um, that have come with us, um, and it, depending on um, how they want it set up, um, you know, our compensation again, playing by the rules, is basically a charitable donation. Mm -hmm. So that can go back to them either on a monthly basis, some of them want quarterly, sometimes it's annually. Yeah. But it's it's also a relationship where we can actually help them as well through our electronic media, um, through our social media. Um, outlets, um, and um, you know, you, you've come on as a customer of ours. We're going to promote, you know, you as well. So sure. um, it, that's worked out well. Sounds like a terrific concept. 
It is, and you know, for a nonprofit, maybe it be a startup or an existing nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as Bruce says, the the, the benefits are just you know, uh, uh, you know uh, unmistakable. So again, I go back to the example. You know, if you're using your current carrier, and you're just paying your current carrier, there's no reciprocal agreement or reciprocal compensation with us. You know, we could engage a relationship with another carrier, in addition to that, we're compensating you for doing business with us. In addition, you know, as Bruce said, we're promoting you, you know, on the social media or at a networking event because one of the things that ETG tries to do is to help the community in terms of nonprofit organizations, maybe the Boys and Girls Club, maybe the YMCA, or the Cape Cod Needy Fund. So, and there's a there's a sort of a third piece to this, uh, you know, not to mention the the taxes and then the usage that you would um, you know get a um, charitable donation on. But there's also a referral program part of it. So um, if a nonprofit has come with us, uh, they're in the program, and they refer us to some other either not for profits or other businesses. If we're able to consult with those businesses, you know, have them come on board with ETG, there's actually a referral fee that goes back to the nonprofit for as long as that customer uh, stays with ETG. Oh, so um, there, there, and that that could continue to con you know grow. Um, it's not just a you know a, there's not a cap. You get you know two referrals. That's not the case. It really could grow. So um, we've we found some very good success with that with. Um, you know, the board of directors who were on a, a nonprofit and say, well, this is a great program. Why don't you speak to so-and-so? And it really can kind of build. And again, there's, a, there's no um, impact to the nonprofit other than just the opportunity to, to, to bring in some to save money. charitable donations, yeah. really, is what it is. And the charitable donations you're talking about is, is given back to that's them. That's a, a check. <coughs> That, so, that's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. pretty neat, and it's um. So this is this is why the confusion with me, of, you know, I, I tried to understand. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about all of this because it's not simple. No, it's not. And, and one of the things that we speak to um, a lot of times when people ask us, "What does ETG do?" Um, you know, we like to consider ourselves. Um, a company that can take the confusion out of a lot of communication, um, you know, scenarios that are out there. Um, as Michael said, you know, sometimes you, you, people don't read their bills. Um, so we're able to go in, do some auditing, and say, hey, you're, you're getting overcharged, or you're getting a bill for a service you don't even use. So, um, you know, that's just, uh, it, there's a lot of confusion. And the nonprofits, too, they have their rules they need to play by. They're very busy with doing what they're trying to do. We can come in and help them. It's, it's a great, great scenario. So you mentioned, you know, a startup as a nonprofit is concerned. And I'll go into two situations. You have an existing company that right now, you know, have multiple location. And those multiple locations have multiple phone systems and multiple billing platforms from multiple carriers. So as an existing company, you're just running your business, just paying the bills, paying your bills. And as right. Bruce said, you know, you, you may have canceled a service, mm -hmm. but you're still getting a bill for it. Mm -hmm. And we could come in and look at it and go, you know, Rob, you've canceled this service and you still get a bill for it. We'll go back to the carrier and try to recoup some of those losses. So if you're a new startup company uh, and you're looking to establish services, the traditional way is that you'll go out there and you'll buy a phone system you'll get a phone guide to come in and install that phone system. You'll get a computer guide to come in and install the computer system. With the traditional way, it's all managed, and you may have heard of the term, the cloud. So you don't need to outlay capital expenses by purchasing a phone system and a computer network. You could put everything in the cloud for a monthly recurring charge, which is less than uh, uh, outlaying capital equipment, so f just rough numbers. You know, for a phone system for a single location, you're looking at five thousand dollars just for the phone system. Then you're looking at a network, you know, for your your operating, you know, Microsoft Office. You know, that could be additional five thousand dollars. So you, you know, for the traditional way, a startup cost is ten thousand dollars out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So with the conventional way going forward. You know, you don't have to outlay that ten thousand dollars. You can just do on a monthly recurring basis for your per a subscription fee base, which helps you to uh, reserve capital so you could put it in operating the business rather than an equipment that's just going to be sitting in the closet, um, you know, collecting dust, for lack of a better word. 
<coughs> and you, you, uh, we basically were talking about phone system, but you do have computer and whatever else they need for their. Yep. So we are full service provider. Uh, so if you take uh, your traditional office. Mm -hmm. uh, we could provide, you know, the internet, we could provide the phone services, we could provide the computers, we could provide the application, we could provide the security. So, you know, the security in terms of a guard at the door, but a security in terms of... <laughs> there are of, many different things. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, uh, a security in terms of compliance. So, you know, if you're a medical uh, facility, you know, there's certain regulation that you have to abide by, may it be uh, uh, HIPAA or other compliance that you have to do. We could take that burden off offer you and uh, provide those services to you. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's really um, uh, um, changing the landscape is just in terms of retention for your email. So under government regulation, as a corporation, profit or nonprofit, you have to keep a backup for seven years of all your email correspondence. Mm -hmm. So if you have five employees or 500 employees or 5,000 employees, wow. that could be pretty substantial, <laughs> just keeping track of all that. You know? And Absolutely. if something happens and the government comes in or some you know, uh, uh, official entity comes in and says, okay, we need to see your record for the last seven years. And if you're not keeping up with it, you could be fined severely. Wow. So that's some of the stuff that we do. You know, as Bruce said, we don't want to be, our core is local, long distance, and internet. But the expanded services include managed services and a whole array of other product wow. and services. And with the <coughs> medical group, as you were talking, confidentiality is exactly. number one. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So yeah. you make sure everything is confidential and Correct. doesn't go out on the airwaves to. Correct. Yeah. And we have partners, you know, uh, that we work with that, you know, us ETG is again just a facilitator to this product and services, not that we're going to provide these product and services. So you'll never get a bill from ETG, just uh, a facilitator in making sure that when you do get a bill from one of our partners that the bill is accurate and you pay in current rates and not being overcharged. So as a facilitator, you are an overseer. Yeah, well, yeah, I like to call. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, we I like to <clears throat> bring it down to where yeah. everybody we're talking to knows. What right, we're down to talking. basically, um, you know, the, the accounting presence. So, for example, <laughs> just a, a rudimentary example: if you have a, a problem with your cell phone and you go into the local, you know, right. wherever it's Verizon Wireless or Nextel or Sprint. Um, you know, and, and they attempt to help you. Um, when you're talking about a company with their you know, internet or data, or, that's who we are. Okay. You work with us. We okay. continue to work with you, yeah. um, and um, you know, for your contract, and obviously, hope yeah. to retain and so forth. So, how do you get paid? We know everybody needs to get paid for what they do. Yeah, we just do it for free. <laughs> we do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> we just, so, we're just nice guys. <laughs> It's a good question. We get it every single time, and it's it's actually part of the you know it's part of the pitch because we'll go in and we'll consult with a, uh, a client. Um, at the end of the day, if they decide to go with the solution that we provided them, we actually are paid by whatever carrier um, that we bring in. So um, it, it's it's kind of nice for a client to hear that because you know well I don't have the money to retain my own personal account team. Um, you know, and we say to them, well, you're not going to pay us. You know, we're paid by the carrier, and we work with, we continue to work with you. So that's kind of a neat little feature, especially for smaller businesses or, or you know, clients <coughs> down here on the Cape where um, they're just not used to this type of uh, you know scenario. Sure. So. And you're probably thinking, you know, why would the, our partners do this? So if you take a typical example of uh, you know the Verizon or the AT and T. For them to retain an account team, they're going to pay a salary, they're going to pay commission, they're going to pay uh, expenses, and there's a certain amount benefits. of expense, expenses that, yeah, benefits and that's associated with hiring that person. Okay. So it's a sense of outsourcing. So they'll come to us, at ETG, and there's other companies that do what we do, and they'll say, okay, we'll sign an agreement with you, you'll manage our customer base, anybody that you bring on <coughs> will compensate you. Sure. And if you take an example, that's outside of the telecommunication industry, and you look at your automobile insurance. You don't go directly to uh, Liberty Mutual or Farmers. Right. You right. go through an agent, and that agent provides the services. Mm -hmm. So it's a similar uh, sector that we're in as far as the telecommunications is concerned. So it's just like you take care of the people, and you, the, the, um, 
companies that you are working with depends upon you to handle <coughs> everything. Sounds great. Correct. Okay. Correct. <coughs> you, you've done a wonderful job of explaining it. I now get it. <laughs> good, 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 good. Very good. Because we only spoke for about five minutes before, so I'm certainly not going to hold that again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been so, wonderful to have you both here. Thank you. Explaining and getting it out on the airwaves. We really appreciate that, and that's what we're all about. Excellent. Um, Again, we appreciate your invitation, Robbie. Thank you very much for, for having us. Oh, it's been my pleasure. <laughs> and Thank if you. you, you know, your viewers need additional information, it's uh, smartetg.com, and uh, you know, you get all the information about our affinity program right. and other product and services that we offer. Yeah. There's a whole whole section on the Affinity uh, <coughs> program, and uh, you can email us at affinity at smartetg.com. We'll get back to you. I'd love to meet, um, meet with you. So. Well, thank you all out there for watching, and uh, this is your host, Robbie Hay, saying good afternoon. We hope to see you again real soon. Thank you for being here. Thank you.